That's the part. Dirk Niblick of the Math Brigade. Well, well, the dulcet tones of Mommy Dearest. I'm watching Square One TV, Mother of My Life. What are you doing? Aha, uh -huh, you're watching it too. I know you never miss the show. Oh, yes, you did miss it that time your nose blew up. What's that? I should remind the kids that it's always a good idea to have pencil and paper when they watch the show. Yes, that is a good idea, and one that I have expressed before. No, 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 I guess it won't hurt to remind them. Kids always have pencil and paper when you watch Square One TV, because you never know when they'll come in handy. What's that? You use them to help play the game shows and to figure out Blackstone's tricks? Good thinking, Mommy Dearest. I couldn't have said it better myself. She's such a grand old gal. I just wish she had other children so she could call them occasionally. I knew the phone was going to ring again. I just knew it. I just hope it isn't all known. Hello? Oh, yes it is. And to whom do I have the pleasure... You're going to what? Ask me to do a mathematical problem? Oh, make up a problem, and you're sure you already know the answer. Well, what's the answer? Two? Eh, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Oh, I haven't done the problem yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, what do you want me to do? Write down a number. Oh, which number? Oh, any number that I choose. Okay, should I tell you what it is? No? Okay. Okay, now what? Add five to it. Okay. Now, so far, so good. Now what? Uh, multiply that number by three. Okay. Now, subtract nine. Okay, you got it. Now, divide, uh-huh, by three. Okay. Now, subtract the original number, and you're telling me... The answer is two. <laughs> hey, the answer is two. How did you... He vanished as mysteriously as he came. I want to try that again, okay? Different number. Um, 14, okay? See, I add five. Okay. Multiply that number by three. Okay, then I subtract nine, okay, I divide by three, okay, and I subtract the original number, that's 14, and the answer is two. That's terrific. Hey, look, why don't you try it at home? Oh, come on, try it. Just pick a number, okay, any number. Now, add five to it, okay? Now multiply that by three. Now subtract nine. Yeah. Got it? Okay. Now you divide by three. Then you subtract the original number, and the answer is two. <laughs> Just wait till Arnold calls. Is he going to be surprised? Uh, hold on. Hi. It is Arnold. So, you want to be a serious actor, huh? Oh, that was amazing. Great. <laughs> oh, 
I have something a little something oh. special for you. This is a bird in a cage. Uh -huh. You can touch it and you see, you put your hand right up on the cage. And no, your hand, your whole flat of your hand right up on it. Your hand on top of the oh, okay. cage. Your other hand on the back of the cage. Okay. Your other hand on the front of the cage. <laughs> and that is the place. It disappears like that. Uh, so I thought you'd like that. I have something else for you. I have to recover Here, it first. Oh, that's it. Here My is a prediction. A oh. prediction. I want you to hold on to this just like that. Okay. And that prediction plays an important part in what we're about to do right over here. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, first of all, Larry, to write down any three-digit number with three different digits. Okay. Here, use my pen. And write it down across there and big enough for everybody to read. Okay. In the meantime, I have a dollar bill right here. And I want to show you an interesting kind of puzzle. Notice the picture of Mr. Washington, mm -hmm. our first president. Now, if I wanted Mr. Washington to stand on his head, as he no doubt would if he were around today, <laughs> I could do it that way. Yeah, that's the easy right. way, but that's no puzzle. Watch this. Now, I'm just going to fold this in half. No, I haven't turned it over, have I? No. Okay, I'm just going to fold it one more time, like that. Uh -huh. I haven't turned it over. No. Okay, fold it one more time, like that. See, I haven't turned it over, have I? No. Okay, let me open it up one more time and show you what has happened. And undo it like that. And now, <laughs> now that's something for you to puzzle over. Yeah. Have you written down that three-digit number? Yes. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is to reverse that number okay. and put the smaller below the larger. All right. And subtract. Okay. So you have written down 642. Okay. Reverse it, 246. And you come up with 396. Right. Now, with 396, you reverse that and add them together. Okay. And what the answer will be is what I have predicted in your hand. One thousand and eighty-nine. Would you open that up and let's see if I was correct in our prediction? Oh, uh oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, wait a minute. Would you do me a favor, if you would, Cynthia? Just fold it in half. What? Uh, we're ready for you now, Mr. Blackstone. Oh, I'll be right there, ready. Fold that in half. That's it. Now fold it in half again. That's it. Now fold this one more time, and then we do the mumbo-jumbo and open it right up again. That's it. And what was your number? Uh, 1,089. Oh, and you have oh, 1,089. Great. Now you can do this, too. Very simply, take any three-digit number with three different digits. 642, reverse that number, 246, can be any numbers. Whatever number you end up with here, you will reverse that, 693, and you will always come up with 1,089. You try it. I have to run. Okay. Think about that. Okay. Test your mathematical wits against those of today's contestants on the game show of number smarts and geometric skill. Hi, I'm Reggie Cathy, and welcome to Triple Play! Yeah! And now, would you please join me in welcoming our host, She's Got Your Number, Cynthia Dallo! Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, everybody, for being with us here today on Triple Play. Here's how we play the game. The object is to get three numbers on the board that, with their line segments connecting them, form an equilateral triangle. Now, the way to get a number on the big board is we spin one, these two wheels. Artisha, would you spin them for me, please? Yell out the sum or product of those two numbers, and that number will light up on the board. The first player to get an equilateral triangle and yell out triple play wins the game. Now, the right wheel has a little square one TV. If you land on that, that, number, that can be any number you choose it to be. Now, let's meet our two contestants. Hi, your name is? Artisha Bishop. Nice to have you here, Artesia. I understand you like to sew. Yeah. Do you like to make clothes, or what do you like Um, dog clothes for my Barbie doll. Oh, that's great. That's a very worthwhile hobby. It could turn into a, a way of making a living. It's really nice. I like to sew, too. And Bayate, what is your last name? Bayate Rossman. Nice to have you here today. I understand you're uh, with the computer games. Well, a little bit. A little bit. Certain <laughs> games I do better in than What's your others. favorite? Uh, I don't have one. Oh, you just like to play them all, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to have you here today. It's nice to have you. Who won the toss backstage? She did. Artisha, that means you spin first. Go ahead. Six, ten. Six times ten is sixty. Sixty purple. Speak up nice and loud for us, okay, okay. Artisha? Bayate, your turn. Two, Nine. Two times nine is eighteen. Eighteen green. Artisha, your spin. Three, ten. 
10 times 3 is 30. 30 purple. By a K, your spin. 4, 12. 4 times 12 is 48. 48 green. Artisha, your spin. 5, 7. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 purple. Bayete? Come on, 17. Right away. 5, square 1 TV. Any number you choose. 5 plus 12 is 17, triple play. Call out those numbers, Bayate. 18, 48, and 17. You got it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, we have time for a bonus round. You won this game. That means Artisha gets to go first. Go ahead. Six, eight. Six times eight is 48. 48 purple. By a K. Three, eight. Three plus eight is 11. 11 green. Artisha, your spin. Four, ten. Four plus um, ten is fourteen. Fourteen purple. By a K. Six, twelve. Looking for those equal. Six plus twelve is eighteen. Eighteen. That's right in on time. Eighteen green. Artisha, your turn. One, eight. One um, plus eight is nine. Nine purple. I a K, your spin. Two, eight. Right. Two times eight is sixteen. That's right. Two times eight is sixteen for green for Bayate. Artisha, your spin. Three, eight. Three plus eight is 11. I'm sorry, that's already covered. Play goes to Bayate. Six, 10. Six times 10 is 60, triple play. Call out the numbers, Bayate. 60, 11, and 18. We got it. Congratulations. Well done. Let's see now, you won both songs then, didn't you? That's really terrific. You were a great player, Artisha. I'm Thank glad you. you could come with us today. You were a good strategist. And you win a Square One TV sweater. Thanks for being with us, and congratulations. And thank you for being with us. And I hope you'll join us again the next time we play Triple Play. Bye. <laughs> Sure is mighty fine of you to come to the town supper with me, Miss Lori. Golly gosh, who wouldn't go with you, Curly? I mean, you are about the handsomest man in these parts. Well, I ain't really. I'm just normal-like. Oh, normal-like, huh? Well, you're terrific and smart and strong and a real cat any girl would love to have on her string. Oh, I ain't really. I'm just running the mill. Well, I won't hear of you saying those kinds of words. Why, you're the most wonderful man in the whole territory. No, believe me, I'm just regular. Well, just listen. I'm just an average American, but that's a plenty for me. I'm just an average American, and you can be one like me. What do I do? All sorts of things. Like? Well, you like to eat? Uh-huh. Well, I eat 43 pounds of chicken and a half a pound of spinach, too. 9.4 pounds of coffee and an acid when I'm through. Lots of bad acid. Oh, about 30 tablets. Every day? Every year. I eat four gallons of ice cream, take six days off from my job. Go to the movies five times a year and eat corn right off the cob. How much corn? Oh, about 13 years. Every day? Every year. I'm just an average American. But that's a plenty for me. I'm just an average American. And you can be one. Of my money 
working job and read two books a year. Only two? I'm slow study. Of course, I like to watch TV 30 hours a week or so. You can bet I laugh 15 times a day. Is it funny? I don't know. I average plenty of showers, about five a week or so. I'm alone just over six hours, but it's getting late. We'd better go. Miss Lori? Miss Lori? <laughs> I guess you drifted off to sleep. <laughs> we don't want to be late to the dance. Oh, I don't think I can go with you tonight, Curly. Well, why not, Miss Lori? I've got an average headache. Good night, Curly. That's funny. That's the same excuse my horse used. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Tuesday, 9.43 a.m., and we could only wonder if the pickers were striking the growers, the directors were striking the producers, and the dodgers were striking the baseball because we were many, many miles from the City of the Angels. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. Our friend is Bronco Guillermo Gomez. My partner is George Tinder Tush, frankly. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We were in the midst of a wild and woolly mystery that involved a strong box full of gold which was stolen in 1853 and had never been recovered. We decided to look at a few scenes from yesterday's show to refresh our thoughts. Our guest had taken us to an old ghost town known as Mulch Gulch. Population, zero. We made camp. George, what are you doing? Getting ready for Betty buying the Lone Prairie, Kate. The whoopie tie I oh whoopie tie I What was that? Sounds like gunshots. Play, Kate. Out here in the prairie, they call it gun play. It sounds like it's coming from town. We went into the ghost town to investigate, but as soon as we got there, everything stopped and got dark, shedding no light on our deepening mystery. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... Unless? Unless what, Miss Monday? Unless someone is trying to scare us away. Mm -hmm. find out what was going on here last night. You okay, Mr. Frankly? Oh. 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 oh, it's getting dim, Kate. George. Tell Martha I keep my insurance policies in my sock drawer. George. But please, Kate, I'm a-going. You tripped. Or with its electrical cord. Oh. Oh, good. Yeah, I thought... Oh, here, let me help you, Mr. Franklin. I'm all right. Let's uh, get on with it. George, doesn't something strike you as a little unusual? Yes. high heel boots aren't as easy to walk in as I thought. This electrical cord. That's right. This town never had electricity. Mathematicians, 
free, stranger. Who are you? Name's Rommel. The Desert Fox? No, oh, that was my cousin. I'm a desert rat. Uh, mind if I put my arms down? It's a little close in here. What were you about to do with that tape recorder, Scruffy? Now, from the looks of it, I'd say I was about to take her into the shop. Why? You got tapes of gunshots? Yep. Saloon fights? Yep. Dance hall music? Yep. Playing them last night? Sure. Trying to scare us away? Yep. Hoping we never come back? And about covers her. It almost worked. Always has before. Why'd you do it, Scruffy? I like to be alone. You don't like people? Nope. Got no use for them. How come? People ruin civilization. That's how come I moved out here. Just wanted to sit back and do nothing. Just wanted to sit back and do nothing. What did you used to do? Well, in the 20s, I was an account executive with an advertising agency back east. Really? Yeah, pretty successful, too. Oh? But I quit. Couldn't stand the pressure? No, the commute. Ever travel from Greenwich to New York City twice a day on a mule? Well, we want you to know we're here for a while, Scruffy. So don't try to scare us anymore. You seem like all right, folks. I suppose you're looking for Capone's gold. <laughs> How did you know that? It's the only reason anybody ever comes here. Have you ever looked for it, Scruffy? Nope. I don't think there ever was any such gold. Just one of them tall tales. Anyway, sorry I scared you. Well, one mystery solved, one to go. Let's go for the gold. Yeah! <clears throat> Mind if I uh, tag along? Come on. See, Miss Monday, this is the big rock. And there's the old tree, just like on the map. Hold it, Bronco, buddy. There's a bunch of trees. How do you know this is the right one? Because it's the only one that's big enough to be more than 100 years old. Good cogitating, Bronco. So? So? So where's the gold? I've been around these here parts for 50 years, and there ain't no gold. There might be, Scruffy. Yes, yeah, Scruffy. At least give us a mathematical chance. Sure thing. I was wondering. Where are you, Scruffy? Yeah. Where do you buy your shirts? The distance between the rock and the tree is nine, ten paces. About ten yards. About 30 feet. Mm. Is that a fact? So what? So? It will help us determine where to dig if the map is to scale. The rock is six inches from the tree. And you said that's 30 feet. If the map is to scale, one inch stands for five feet. Well, how in tarnation is that going to show you where to dig? It's called triangulation. It's a mathematical process. Did you ever study mathematics in school? Oh, sure. We used to have to figure out if a farmer growed 20 pecks apples a day and sold them for a nickel a pound, how long before he could afford to go to Chicago on a train if a ticket cost $18. Is that what you mean? Not exactly. There are a couple of ways to figure this problem out, Scruffy. Here's the rock. Here's the tree. We draw a line between the two. Now, we draw a line between the rock and the arrow, and between the tree and the arrow. You made one of them three-sided things. A triangle. Now, we had a protractor. A tractor? A protractor is an instrument we use to measure angles. Uh-huh. If we had a protractor, we could measure this angle and this angle. Then what? Then we can mark these angles on the ground here. And I can walk out this way, and you could walk from the rock at this angle, and where we meet is about where we should dig. This mathematics stuff is fascinating. So? So? So do it! Dig! We haven't got a protractor, Scruffy. So how can we find him, Miss Monday? Well, let's assume that the map is to scale. If one inch stands for five feet, then how far is it from the rock to the arrow and from the tree to the arrow? It is eight inches from the rock and 10 inches from the tree. 40 feet and 50 feet. I'll get the ropes. A necktie party? Oh, Scruffy. 
Just kidding, Miss Kate. Might not. How long are they, George? I don't know. We need a 50-foot length and a 40-foot length. How tall are you, George? Six feet, one-eighth inch. Here's a six-foot length of rope, roughly. Here, piece to scale. There's a 12-foot length of rope. Double that, and you get 24. And once again, we get 48. And two more feet, you get approximately 50 feet. Bronco and Scruffy took the 50-foot length to the tree while I measured 40 feet on the second rope. George took our rope to the rock and the measurement continued. the gold should be roughly where the gold should be if the map and george are to scale ha 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 hey you guys here's the third leg of the triangle look if you liked it on the map then you'll love it on the ground <laughs> our digging began in earnest but before long the novelty wore off. We were about to give up when suddenly... Miss Monday! of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. This is PBS. Local broadcast of this program is made possible by an underwriting grant from the Grumman Corporation. Grumman Corporation, a Long Island company committed to education. <laughs>